A booster dose of the COVID-19 vaccine has now been available for a couple of months and millions of people have already taken it. So a good question to ask is, how is it going? How are people feeling? Are they reporting any new symptoms after receiving this additional dose? Or more intense symptoms compared to the first time they received a vaccine dose? Hello everyone, I'm Naveen Agarwal and welcome to my weekly video update. So I just came across some brand new data published by the CDC where they collected information from a survey of people who have received an additional dose and their experience with that dose. And they, they analyzed that information and they presented that in a report. Very, very interesting piece of information. But share in your comments and questions below if you have taken a booster dose, what was your experience like compared to the first time that you took the vaccine? Or if you are thinking about getting a booster dose but still not sure, what are your questions and concerns that are still unresolved. Please share in your questions and comments below. So we look into this data, which was a self-reported survey, and it's a very interesting system that CDC has. I just learned about this and I signed up in that program just two days ago. It's called the VSAFE program, and it's completely voluntary, and you sign up, you share your uh, cell phone number, where they will give you a survey after you indicate that you have taken a vaccine dose and you just finish that, send it back to them. Tens of thousands of people are responding. So it's not like uh, they are not willing to help. And if you are inclined to do so, I would strongly encourage you to register. And I'll give you a link where you can find out more about this particular program. So CDC compiled this information uh, during the month of August and September, whoever got that third dose and filled the survey. Uh, they compiled this information and presented that in a report. So we'll look into that. Uh, again, emphasizing a few key points, and there's some very interesting key points there, so make sure you watch this video until the end. And most importantly, really emphasize what it does not mean. So I always say that one report, one piece of data is only one part of the whole story. We should look at it, understand it, and continue to build our understanding over time. This is what we are trying to do in these videos week after week. So I hope you will uh, share this journey with me and understand these things at a deeper level before you make decisions that affect your personal life and those of your friends and family. But again, keep sharing your questions and comments below. I love engaging with you. I've heard so much from so many of you. So, so keep doing that in your questions and comments. Okay, so let's look into this data together and we will highlight a few points along the way. So this data was published in this MMWR report. This is CDC's weekly report, and I'll give you a link to this report as part of the video. This is Mortality and Morbidity Weekly Report. Just came out in October. We save survey responses from people who have received an additional dose during the August 12 to September 19 timeframe, and they filled the survey. More than 22,000 people reported so it's not a small number, you know, still a snapshot, still a small sample, but a fairly significant sample. And they were sharing their experiences with the adverse events or side effects within the first seven days after receiving this additional dose. That's the time frame. 75% people reported injection site reaction. So it could be pain or swelling or a little bit of inflammation. 70% responded systemic reaction, which is could be a fatigue or fever. But most were mild to moderate and occurred on the first day after vaccination. So it happens pretty quickly. It doesn't happen three, four, five days later. And most are mild to moderate. And again, that is a relative scale, right? Something that is mild or moderate to somebody could be actually quite severe for somebody else. But this is what people are telling them in the survey, how they felt in general. So injection site pain, 71%. So quite a lot of people feel that injection site pain. Fatigue in general, about 55%. Muscle pain, 43%. Fever, 29%. The third item is important to pay attention to. 2% needed medical care. And 0.1% were hospitalized. Now we don't know the severity of their condition. We don't know 
how long they stayed in the hospital and what the outcome was. Now that's a follow up. So CDC actually shares this information with other agencies and they follow up with those people who needed medical care and were hospitalized to see what happened. And there is a vaccine safety surveillance database where this information will eventually go. So there is a slight chance and people are reporting that they needed medical care after the additional dose and some of them were even hospitalized. But in general, most people are reporting mild to moderate symptoms. Now, I want to emphasize that the survey demographics do not represent the overall US vaccinated population because it's self-reported. You have to register in the program and then you have to report. So only some types of people will report if they are interested or sign up. But let's look at who is reporting just to understand what the demographic is. There were a total of 22,591 responses, but uh, let's look at it in the perspective of how many people have actually received an additional dose as of September 19th, it's over 2 million. So it's a small percentage of that overall group which has received uh, an additional COVID vaccine. Female, 63%, male, 36%. So more females than males actually reported. Predominantly white, 81%. All other about 19%. And you know, other, other minority representation was not more than 5% for one particular group. So really it's predominantly whites. 18 to 49, about 29%. 50 to 64, about 30%. And 65 to 74 year old, 31%. So about one third, one third, one third. Now a question to ask is, we know that um, for the mRNA vaccine booster dose, only 65 years and above are eligible by default. Others have to show that they have exposure or they have risk of severe COVID-19 if they are younger. But many young, younger people are getting a booster dose. And uh, the speculation really is that they are probably in the healthcare field or they are just inclined to go get a booster shot because of their exposure in their job, they do other jobs, and um, maybe they have a uh, risk of COVID-19, severe risk of COVID-19. But it's interesting to see that even uh, people younger than 65 have received a booster dose and they are reporting their symptoms. So this is what the overall demographic look like. So you can clearly see that this is not representative of the overall US vaccinated population. So this is only a certain subgroup which is uh, representing, re represented in this data. This is an interesting piece of information that I, I gathered. Most mRNA vaccinated staying with the same type, but JNJ vaccinated switching to mRNA. So let's look into that. So if you look at Moderna or Pfizer, Moderna about 10,000, more than 10,000 people, 99%, nearly 99% of them stayed with Moderna for their third dose. Same thing with Pfizer. Over 11,000 people, 98% of them stayed with Pfizer. Very few went to Moderna or uh, Pfizer in a, in a switched way. And j, j very, very small. So most people who received the two doses of the mRNA vaccine, they decided to stay with the same type of vaccine for their third dose, even though mix and match is currently available. Look at the JNJ, small, very, very small sample size, but less than 30% stayed with the JNJ dose and more than 70% actually switched to an mRNA vaccine between Moderna and Pfizer. So what seems to be happening is that people who received the single dose of JNJ vaccine, they are deciding, at least those who are responding in the survey, they are deciding to go for an mRNA vaccine between Moderna and Pfizer, about the same frequency. So that was a pretty interesting piece of information. So here is a, here's a very interesting chart. This compares only the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines by dose. So th this one is the first dose, this is second dose, this is third dose. And here they are telling you uh, any local reactions, any systemic reactions, unable, any health impact, unable to perform daily activities, unable to work or needed hospital care. So when it comes to Moderna, we see that compared to the second dose, slightly more frequent reporting of 
injection site reaction, slightly more. It's still in the 80s, but slightly less systemic reaction. And again, this is not representative. So from a practical point of view, now statistically they are different, but from a practical point of view, I see them as pretty much the same, same as before, no different. Any health impact, unable to perform daily activities so the condition is severe, unable to work, more severe and, and needed medical care. So of course, a small percentage of people needed medical care and needed to be hospitalized, we know that. Now let's look at the Pfizer data. Same, same scale and same um, categories. So in general, the numbers are lower. For example, injection site reaction is in the 70% range compared to 80% range for Moderna. Same here, 70% range for systemic reaction compared to about 80%. We know that the dose two triggered a more intense response in people and more frequently people responded. But it looks like the dose three was not terribly different than dose two. And this is statistically analyzed by the data that they looked at. And again, the pattern looks pretty much the same. So in a nutshell, for the mRNA vaccine, the third dose did not lead to any new reactions or anything different than what people experienced in the second dose. But please share your experience in the comments below. If you took either M uh, mRNA vaccine, either Pfizer or Moderna, did you feel anything different compared to your second dose? I would love to hear that from you. This data is not available for the J&J vaccine because the sample size was very, very small. So to summarize, really, about the same type of uh, side effects are being reported in response to the additional dose. For mRNA vaccines, second dose versus third dose, not much different. There is still a small risk of serious reactions and needing medical care. There is a small risk, it's not zero. So that's why I keep emphasizing that you need to evaluate your risk at an individual level before you make a decision. This is general information and we learn something, but we always need to ask the question, how does it affect us? How does it apply to us? And let's not extrapolate that directly without talking to our doctor if we have existing medical conditions. So there is a small risk, it's not without risk. But in general, the conclusion is that it is not different than the primary vaccination. And finally, the point to emphasize is that most people who receive the mRNA vaccine, either Pfizer or Moderna, they are staying with the same type of vaccine. But j, &J vaccine uh, recipients, they are switching to the mRNA, either Moderna or Pfizer. Now, this is only one month, only 22,000 people. I'm pretty sure we will ha have an updated analysis available from CDC as more data is gathered. And I will present that to you. And this is not very scientific from a sampling point of view, but I'm also pretty sure that there will be more scientific and technical papers in the future where more data is gathered and some statistical analysis is done to analyze this real world data. And I'll bring that information to you. But please keep sharing in the comments below your questions and your thoughts and your opinions about this issue. Our hope is through this continued dialogue and engagement, we can learn together and have a better understanding. Thank you again for watching and your interest and, and engagement. I wish you all the best. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Now we are coming into the Thanksgiving week. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Everybody, please stay safe.